that you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anointed my head with oil and my cup overrun. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will and shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God's word for each and every one of his saints that's on the line tonight. But we know that God is good. Amen. Amen. So thank you, each and every one, for your participation just being on the line right now because you have strengthened us as we have gone forth, praising, giving, honor, and glorifying God this evening. So with that being said, we will go and read the announcements uh, for the rest of the week. And uh, uh, any upcoming events. And then uh, sick and shut in in the word of prayer. Uh, so, uh, now I guess we, okay, so we're just doing the fast on the last Thursday of the month and we come together on the first the first first Thursday of the month. Okay. And then we come together with the fasting and prayer. Uh, but our theme for this month is come, let us worship the Lord. And so on Saturday at 8.20 a.m., uh, telephone corporate prayer of agreement. Uh, the access code is in and telephone numbers in your bulletin. If you do not have it, you can call the church to receive that. And then uh, upcoming uh, Saturday, April the 20th at 12 noon, the Missionary Society will be sponsoring a, a prayer brunch. Uh, it will be virtual. And so that's 12 o'clock on April the 20th. Uh, we will come together on the 21st, uh, April the 21st, and after our 9.30 service, we will have baptism. And then uh, the Music Council will have a workshop on Saturday the 27th. And then on uh, April the 28th, which will be choir day. And all of those voices will be uh, heard at a 2 o'clock anniversary service of the choirs. We want to thank God for, for all of that. And so now uh, for our uh, second shut-in on our bulletin, we have Brother James Borkins. We have Sister Missy Branch. We have Sister Lola DeVille. We have Sister DeVette Graham. We have Sister Magnolia Long. We have Sister Patricia Martin. We have Sister Lavinia McNeil. We have Sister Ruby Morgan. We have Sister Molly Tillman. We have Sister Carolyn Warren. We have Deaconess Annie White. And those in nursing homes, we have Sister Marie Block. We have Sister Queen Cook. We have Sister Elizabeth Parker, we have Sister Barbara Wallace, and we have Brother Philip Govain. And those members who are not part of our second shut-in shut list, but are re requesting prayer, uh, Deaconess Billion Jones, Sister Anna Smith, Sister Frances Rush, Sister Fanny Butler, Sister Tanya Jones, Sister Dor Dorothy Irby, and we praying for Reverend Owen W. Young. We have Sister Lula Jackson. We have Sister Mary F. Washington. We have Sister Jean Whitley. We have Sister Cheryl Jordan. We have Deaconess Clara Washington. We have Reverend Lori Davis and her daughter, Sister Sheraton Davis. We have Sister Dorothy Wells Folks and her mom, Sister Mary Gong. We have Reverend William Folks. We have Sister Denise Simmons. 
We have Brother Philip Samuel. We have Brother Bobby Moss. We have Reverend Claudius Jones. We have Deacon Douglas Norcutt. We have Deacon James Harold King. We have Deacon Roland Penny. We have Reverend uh, uh, George Holmes. Reverend, well, I don't know how to say that. Reverend Dr. No, Bishop, Reverend Dr. George Holmes. We have Reverend Roland White. We have Brother Paul Brown. We have uh, Reverend Raymond Jones, Brother uh, Reverend Claudius Jones down there in Kinston. We have Trustee Gary Moore. We have uh, Sister Jeanette Ashford, who's the honor sister, Arlene Williams. Uh, we have Sister Tina Lyles Fisher. We have Sister Tanya Saunders. We have Sister Carrie Johnson. We have Sister Geneva Morris. We have Brother Stephen Jones. We have Brother Ernest R. Gibson Jr. We have Sister Barbara Jones Winston. We have Sister Vivian Obiano. We have Sister Linda Young. We have uh, Sister Shirley Martin. We have Sister Tamara Wilkinson. We have Deaconess uh, Lolita Plummer. We have Sister Annette Fouch. We have Sister Annie Virginia Henderson. We have Sister Lita Gibson. We have Sister Tanya Devane. We have Brother Corey Ford, the nephew, cousin, grandson of the Ford family. We have Sister Verletta Devane. We have Sister Elizabeth Taylor. We have uh, Sister uh, Trustee Emeritus Virginia McCray. Uh, Sister Anna Smith is, re is uh, requesting prayer. Continue for her sister, Sister Devaney Reed. Uh, Sister Deborah Tyler is uh, requesting prayer for her mom, Sister Maria Jenkins. Uh, Deacon Jeffrey Tyler is uh, a uh, friend, uh, Sister Teresa Thomas, uh, Deaconess Lillian Jones, is requesting for her, for her sister, Sister M.D. Hill in uh, New Bern, uh, North Carolina. Sister Lasanji Perry is requesting prayer for her relatives, being a cousin and uncle. Uh, Sister Stacy Watson is requesting prayer for herself and her daughter, their niece. Uh, Sister Wanda Norcutt uh, to request a prayer for her. And Deacon Norcutt, sister, sister in law, Sister Hattie uh, Deerhorn there in Charlotte. And we have uh, Sister uh, Pam Parker also, who is the mother in law of the mother of Sister, I mean, yeah, well, Sister Lisa and Reverend uh, Leon Parker. Uh, there in Charlotte also. Uh, I believe that's all that I have as far as the sick and shut in. I know that each of us are carrying those on our hearts uh, that we are praying for. Uh, and, it, and whether it be a, a neighbor or friend or co-worker or, or, you know, just keep on uh, praying uh, for those ones who are sick. And as far as bereavement, uh, we wanted to continue to lift up uh, trustee and training uh, Rita Brown. Uh, she has uh, several funerals uh, that she has and her family has attended in the last uh, week and, and coming up also. Uh, so let's continue to uh, lift up the uh, sister, uh, trustee and trainer Rita Brown, her and her family. Uh, we want to uh, continue to lift up uh, sister, our late sister Louise family, Fleming's family, the Greens, Bartons, and the Gaskins. Uh, we finalized her on uh, last Friday. And uh, for those upcoming uh, funerals, uh, uh, the former deacon, deaconess of uh, Deaconess Mary Grant, 
uh, uh, Deacon John Grant, Johnny Grant's uh, wife, will be funeralized on this coming Monday. Uh, well, I'm sorry. Uh, this coming Monday, it will be a wake at Stewart Funeral Home from 6 to 8 p.m. there on Benny Road, uh, and then uh, Northeast, and then uh, her funeral will, will be held on 16th at Maple Springs Baptist Church uh, there in Capitol Heights, Maryland, with the uh, viewing starting at 8.30, uh, and uh, I believe the service starts at uh, 11. I know those deafness had to get in there, so uh, uh, I may might have the time right on that, but uh, I'm quite sure you can call the church and they can let you know the time on uh, the service itself there. And also this coming Monday, uh, we want to lift up uh, the Holland Eaton family uh, on the recent passing of uh, Brother Christopher Eaton. Eaton, uh, and he will be funeralized there at the church on this coming Monday uh, with the during the awake at 10 and the service starting at 11. Um, so that is all that I have as far as sick and shut in and uh, the grievance. Uh, Reverend Young or Deacon Gilliard, do you have any others? Yes, Deacon Jones. Um, Good evening. My understanding is uh, on Sister Grant's um, the um, Tuesday service. The viewing is between eight thirty and nine thirty. Um, the Delta uh, service is at nine thirty, and the service is scheduled to begin at ten thirty. And um, also on the sick and shut in, Sister. Uh, Magnolia Long has been discharged from the Southern Maryland Hospital. Um, and uh, we have a, a correction in the address for the Capital City Wellness Rehab Center where Sister Marie Block is. Uh, that address is 2425 25th Street, um, Southeast. Um, it's not on Alabama Avenue. Um, so it's on on 25th Street Northeast. Um, those are only two updates that I have uh, for you, uh, Deacon Jones. Okay, so that's Northeast and not Southeast for Sister Block. Mm -hmm. Southeast. Southeast. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Derek okay. uh, Deacon Ford discovered that. Okay. Thank you for the update on on that. Mm -hmm. You're uh, welcome. So, uh, according to uh, James, the fifth chapter, verse 13, Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are you cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with all in the name of the Lord. The prayer of the faith will save the sick. And the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another, and pray for one another, so that you may be here. The prayer of the righteous is powerful, and it is effective. Let us pray. Father God, we just come to you this evening, Lord God, just thank you for being God. We just thank you for this opportunity you have given us one more time to come together to praise and honor and glorify you and just send up a words of timber unto you. So we pray, pray that you hear all of those prayers that have been lifted up to you this evening. Lord God, for we have put all our total trust, faith, and belief in all the what you have promised to us in your word. And we just thank you for your word because in your word we know there is Love, there's life, and there's light to lead us along. So we ask you to hear our cries this evening, Lord God, for we know that no, no healing is too hard for you, for you are our help in our time of need, and you bless us always. So Lord God, just touch those ones who 
need a physical or emotional or mental or financial or spiritual healing, Lord God. Strengthen us as we continue on this Christian journey. So we ask you to go by to several homes and hospitals and nursing homes and just touch them, Lord God. Be with them. Heal them, Lord God. It's only you are the great healer. And so we just call upon you to go by and just touch them this evening. But not Amen. only them, Lord God, but also their caregivers, their doctors and the nurses, their family members, Lord God. Strengthen them as they uh, tend to these ones who are sick. Just be with them all, Lord God. And right now, Lord God, we ask for comfort to those ones who had lost a loved one along the way. Bring comfort to them, Lord God. It's only you know how. We all know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. So, Lord God, we just ask you to hear our prayers this evening. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. You are our fresh spring. You are our healing rain. You are our life giver. So we just put this, we just bring this all to you right now. We just thank you for allowing us to be in your presence this evening, Lord God, and just be with us and guide us along the way. And we will forever give your name to sincere honor, praise, and glory, which you so deserve. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. And so at this time, we want to thank each and every one for the prayer service portion. And now we will turn it over to Reverend Young. And it's good to see Reverend Young with us this evening. So we turn over the Bible study to Reverend Young this evening. Amen to that. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, uh, Deacon Jones. And all the deacons that facilitated the prayer service. And all that participated in it as well. Um, so I greet you in the in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ, who has allowed us to come together uh, to not only have our prayer service but have Bible study also. Amen. 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 And um, uh, as was put on one call last night on Saturday night, I tested positive with that old COVID. I got a suspicion. I, I think I know where it came from, but I can't prove it. Uh, and it wasn't from anybody around the church. <clears throat> um, but um, nonetheless, I tested positive and, and went to the doctor and they gave me that Plaxovid medicine. And I've been taking it ever since, taking I uh, finished the fourth day uh, regimen uh, this evening. And um, as it was when I contracted it back then in 2022, it took away the uh, the uh, symptoms by the second day, uh, with the exception of oh, a headache that came this morning that was pretty persistent. Uh, but it's gone now, too. So we thank God for your prayers. Um, and uh, and we uh, thank God for his healing power, his power mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for calling on his name on our behalf. We ask your continued prayers that uh, my, my uh, uh, quarantine uh, will help so that my family will not contract it as well. Um, so we thank you for your prayers and some calls and uh, text messages and um, and for the Lord's healing power. So we thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, I'm glad He's given me the energy uh, to uh, prepare for Bible study this evening. We're going to have our open book test. Uh, so everybody ought to have the answers because it's going to be open book uh, of Matthew's Gospel, chapter 22. And it's going to be sequential. We're going to start right from the front. We're going to go about halfway. I won't keep you too long. And what we don't cover tonight in our review, we will pick up on, on next week. So with that said, uh, let me uh, invite the Lord into our uh, Bible study. Lord God, we thank you. Oh, for your many fold blessings. Thank you, Lord, for many benefits toward us. We thank you for your, for your healing power. Uh, we thank you for our prayer service, Lord. 
in uh, all the testimonies and pray that those testimonies and songs that were sung and prayers that were rendered, scriptures that were read will be an encouragement to somebody. Uh, so, Lord, we, we thank you. We invite you, Lord, into our Bible study as well, that you come on in and take your seat. Uh, um, just take your seat, O Lord, within our hearts and uh, just lead us in our discussions, guide us and direct us uh, according to your word um, and guide us according to Christian love. And all that said, Lord, we pray will be done um, to your glory and to your honor. Oh, so this is our opening prayer, Lord. It's in the precious name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So you have some multiple choice questions. You have to have some choose the correct answer questions. You have some complete the sentence uh, questions. Um uh, did I say true or false? It has some true or false questions as well. So some of them are going to be a little challenging. Others will be, be pretty straightforward. So with that said, oh, by the way, um, uh, I think one of my, my main computer um, is acting like it has a virus in it too. Um so I'm operating out of one computer today. So I'm going to be going from one screen to the next uh, so I can see you. But that other computer is acting crazy and I'm getting ready to get some help with it to see if I can't restore because a lot of my study materials are on that computer. Uh, so we will see what we can do. So pray over the computer. Uh, pray that it gets healthy also, amen? Amen. All right. So do I have a volunteer? It's open book. Let me let me get a volunteer for the second one. I need a I need somebody to 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 uh volunteer in another way. Uh let me read it first. It says in Matthew chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. We studied Jesus' parable of the king who prepared the marriage for his son. Who can tell us what happened in the parable? Can somebody tell us what happened in the parables? Right there in your text. Chapter 22, verses 1 through 14. And of course, everybody's already read the text, studied it, read it to prepare for class tonight. So who can can kind of summarize what uh what took place in the parable? Somebody come on and make the Lord happy. Well what was the question again? <laughs> uh, I need someone to to summarize um, <laughs> the parable that Jesus told about the, the king who prepared the marriage for his son. Ooh. You want the whole parable or just something? Well, he sent he sent the people out to get people for the for the choir for for the party. Uh huh. And then nobody accepted. Okay. So he couldn't uh -huh. find anybody. So he had to make another route. <laughs> Yeah, okay. get some, some more people ain't told him to go out and get up and down the highway and the streets and get all that he could find and prepare them and get them ready so they have a guest at the wedding. Mm-hmm. Oh, you want some more? Oh. Yeah. 
<laughs> so they did. Then when I then they got a lot of people to come to the wedding, but there's one man that came that didn't have on the garment. And so he uh, so he asked the guy, I said, why did you come work and not have him to come in on? So the guy couldn't tell him. So he told him to go ahead and throw him, take all your head and throw him into the uh, out of darkness. So. <laughs> and had a nest in the teeth because he mm -hmm. had the right garment on. All and, right. <laughs> and I think the right garment was supposed to be his, his, the spirit of Christ. He didn't have the uh, love of Christ in his heart. So that was his uh, undress uh, uniform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, let's unmute and give the Lord a hand praise for Reverend Folks summarizing that parable for us. Amen. <laughs> bless you, bless you. <laughs> amen, amen. All right. So, um, so the uh, king sent out the invitation, uh, was probably sent out the invitation in advance and went to tell the people that the uh, stuff was being prepared to come on to the marriage feast. And right. they, um, they, uh, uh, the first set of people, um, were, didn't care, they were in, they were indifferent, right? And, um, so he sent some more servants out uh, to. Invite folks to say, hey, I'm going through all this trouble, y'all. Come on. Mm -hmm. And and they were too busy. Uh, they were too busy. Um, that I think somebody was, they had a, probably going and working their farms and other things. And then it sent some more servants out and they killed them. Yeah, that's right. They killed them. And then uh, the king... Um, Sent an army and he destroyed all of those that killed his killed his servants. And and right, you said that uh, uh, and the king sent out the uh, servants, some more servants to those that are in the highways and byways, right? Mm -hmm. In the highways and byways, and he brought them in, and and the place was overflowing. Uh, it said it was filled. Well, I guess field in the same as overflowing, but it was it was full. Mm -hmm. And um, then they looked and they saw one person that uh, didn't have the wedding clothes on. Wait, and, and, we, and those folks wouldn't have had wedding clothes in advance. So when they came, they probably gave them wedding clothes. But this one was given chance. Right, he was given his, but he didn't put them on. And uh, and as a result, he was asked about it. He was speechless. They had nothing to say. And they said, take him, bind him up and, and send him out there to the outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yeah. Amen. So I just kind of filled in some of the things that you left out a little bit. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but you did a marvelous job. Well, Amen. Amen. So uh, I, that doesn't give us the explanation of it, though, but uh, we'll get to that in a minute. I don't want to give it give it a word. Where's your wife anyway, uh, sister, uh, brother, folk, uh, brethren folks? Uh, uh, she, I thought she was, I saw her name on it. I thought she was on, but. She, I don't see it. She's in, uh, she's in Holy, uh, Holy Cross Hospital. She is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they kept uh, oh. oh, Oh, okay. We'll talk about that a little later. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. Yeah. Uh, all right, so. Um. Number two, the parable seems to imply God has, God is very, no, has very little patience. He has very little grace and long suffering toward those who invite, who he invited into his kingdom. It looked like he has very little patience, very little grace. And not much long suffering toward those he invited into the kingdom. True or false? Need somebody to call out your name before you answer. That do that. Dignus Jones. Well, 
access force. Uh, all right. Is that your final answer? Yes, it is. Is everybody in agreement with her? Yes. <laughs> no. Uh oh, we got a no. Uh, Sister Barbara. So. Well. Let me read again. Read it again. The parable seems to imply God has very little patience, very little grace, and very little long suffering, which is the same thing as patience, toward those who He is inviting into His kingdom. I, I say no, I to, because I think that God has a lot of patience and gives us time. To, get things right oh okay uh oh okay uh you, you're you're <laughs> your aunt your statement is correct what you just said um so so you sounds like you're in agreement with deaconess jones that what i said was false oh. because you said he does have patience right yes <laughs> oh, okay yes yeah. so you're saying you're saying this this statement i made is false uh yeah. So, so, uh, and both of you are correct. It, it is false. Uh, is obviously God has a lot of patience and a lot of grace and a lot of long suffering to those who he invited into his kingdom. Matter of fact, there's been almost 2000 years since Jesus died and he hadn't come back to, to set up his kingdom nor to uh, destroy the world yet. So that's a whole lot of patience right there. Amen. 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 All right. Number three. It's also true and false. Um, and call out your name instead of the answer. The religious rulers who were God's chosen people refused to accept God's invitation to accept his son, Jesus Christ, by faith. True or false. Call out your name and not the answer. Religious rulers who were God's chosen people refused to accept God's invitation to accept his son, Jesus Christ, by faith. True or false? Barbara Walker. Is the Walker? I think it's true. That's your final answer? Yes. All right. Your answer is correct. Very good. Very good. Uh Yep, they refused to accept God's invitation. That was what the parable was about. They refused to accept God's invitation to accept his son, uh, Jesus Christ, by faith. All right, next. Next, next, next. Um, this one is multiple choice. Jesus' parable seems to be an indication, A, God has gone through great lengths to prepare this marriage. B, an indication of or charge, excuse me, an indictment or charge against the religious leaders for rejecting John the Baptist, the prophets, possibly the apostles, and the Son of God. C, um, this is an indication, it's a declaration, rather, that the religious leaders are going to pay dearly in judgment for killing the Son of God, or D, oh, which uh, which is, uh, everybody say it together? All of the All above. Of the above. All, All of the above. <laughs> Amen. So, so, yeah, God has gone through great lengths to prepare this, this, this marriage feast, uh, literally. Not just in this story, this parable, but literally, he's gone through a great um, ex extremes, sacrificing his only son, inviting folks into his his marriage feast, and it's the indication of or a charge against the religious leaders for rejecting John the Baptist, the prophets, and possibly the apostles, uh, and the Son of God. And it's a declaration that the religious leaders is going to pay dearly in the judgment for killing the Son of God. And so it's A, I mean, it's B, all of the above. All right. Now, this time, 
This time, I need you to choose the correct answers. One out of four of these answers uh, is correct. So it says, those invited from the highways were A, the Pharisees, B, the Gentiles, C, the Sadducees, or D, the scribes or lawyers, they called. Pharisees, Gentiles, Sadducees, or the lawyers. Somebody call out the name and not dance. Don't everybody answer at the same time. Come on, somebody, come on. Yeah. We need to hear the question. So those invited from the highways and byways were which one of the these four? Pharisees, Gentiles, Sadducees, or the lawyers? All right, somebody help us out. What was the question again, Reverend Young? <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't hear all the options. Uh, those invited um, to the marriage feast um, mm -hmm. from the highways and byways. Mm -hmm. uh, um, choose one. Um, the, it. it it was the Pharisees, the Gentiles, the Sadducees, or the lawyers? The Gentiles? Is that your final answer? Um, yeah. <laughs> I think that's answer? my final answer. <laughs> your final answer is correct. No, okay. Cool. Very good. Very good. All right. Very good. Next. Um, this is true or false. The Gentiles accepted the king's invitation to accept the son, as did those in the highways uh, who accepted the king's invitation to the wedding. Let me read that again. The Gentiles accepted the king's invitation to accept the son, as did those in the highways who accepted the king's invitation to the wedding. So you're taking it from the parable to reality. And and um, who who are Gentiles? They was like us. Uh-huh. Yeah. And we they, they was not Jewish. They was not mm -hmm. uh, the non-Jews. Non-Jews, right. right. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. So these non-Jews, uh, so non-Jews. Think of it in reality now. The non-Jews accepted the king's invitation to accept the son, people like us, as did those in the highways who accepted the king's invitation to the wedding. True or false? True. What do you say, Dick and his Jones? I said true. And you are correct. That is true. Uh, those who accept Jesus Christ uh, those Gentiles who accept Jesus Christ's invitation to accept Jesus Christ, um, accepting God's invitation in, in the same way that those Gentiles did in that day, in that parable, um, who accepted the king's invitation to the wedding. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, I need somebody to answer this question. Um are people extending invitations today as they should? No. No. Okay. Uh, the trainer Tyler says no. And that's a trick question. I don't know how we're supposed to know. Uh, uh, I don't know what data we have. I guess we could go to um, some of those uh, services that gather that kind of data, but um, we can just see a we can see personally that I guess we have to look at ourselves and decide if we're sharing um, 
the invitations well enough. I think that's where I was coming from. There you go. Yeah, I was coming from there. Uh, uh, the biggest biggest room in the in the world is room for improvement. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. All right. So next. Um many are accepting the invitation, but many are a indifferent to the invitation. B, too busy to accept the invitation. C, have resentment toward the Son of God. Or D, all of the above. All together? All of the above. All of the above. All of the above. Uh, so some things change and some things don't. There's nothing new under the sun. People still indifferent or don't care. Uh, there's some people still too busy. And there's some that have resentment toward toward the Son of God for one reason or another. So D is the correct answer, all of the above. All right, I need somebody to complete this statement. Um, there was one who refused to put on the wedding clothes provided to him because, we discussed this a little bit. Uh, there was one who refused to put on the wedding clothes provided to him because, who wants to fill in the blank? Uh, I'm speechless, speechless. Uh, uh, because he was speechless? Yeah. Uh, uh, something happened bef before that. Really? Yeah, before. Why didn't he put the clothes on? He wasn't speechless until he um, was they confronted. Him. I mean, when they questioned him. Yeah, yeah. But well, why did why I should ask another one? Why do you think he was he he was not in the wedding clothes? Oh. Was it that did he lack faith? Mm. Did it have anything to do with his faith? I, I might have had something to do with it. Mm hmm. Is that something to do with being ready when, when the Lord it, comes? They wasn't ready. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So being being ready. <laughs> you know how they said you never know. So keep on the whole arm of God in your faith, like Sister Van Hagen was saying. I see where you're going. <laughs> But didn't have faith. The song say, "I'm getting ready," <laughs> and, he, and he wasn't ready. <laughs> All right. Amen. Any other thoughts? All right. Let me see if I can help you out. I believe he thought he could accept the invitation, but refused to be robed in the right apparel. Right. In the same way, people may say they accept Christ, but they refuse to take off self and be robed in Christ. Amen. They're not, he wasn't robed in righteousness. He wasn't robed in a right relationship with the king, which is God. Amen. That sound reasonable? Amen. Remember we talked about that a little bit? Yes. All right, very good, very good. Everybody's an A student thus far. All right. Um, so uh need a volunteer for this question. This is real simple. True or false? Who's volunteering? Clues are clues have already been given for it. Sister Johnson, I see your screen light up. <laughs> no volunteers? Oh, no, bye. I'll try. All right. Digging his Jones. Uh, true or false? He had a lot to say. Who had a lot to say? The guy that wasn't rolled properly. No, that's false. 
Yeah, all right. Very good. <laughs> I told y'all that was easy. Amen. Amen. I wasn't trying to fool you. All right. Now I need somebody to complete this sentence. Uh, uh, after the Pharisees heard Jesus, they should have fallen. Complete the sentence. After the Pharisees heard Jesus, they should have fallen. Finish that sentence. Any ideas? Sister Barbara, what are you saying? You said they should have fallen. Yeah. What, what should come after that? The Pharisees, after hearing Jesus, should have fallen blank. Uh -huh. Give you a couple more words. Falling to blank. Falling to their blank. How about falling to their knees and asking for mercy. But it was sad that they didn't. Amen, amen. Oh. And that applies to folks today. When they hear of the goodness of, of Jesus and God, they ought to fall to their knees and ask for mercy. But there's still people that are, uh, don't care, uh, too busy, um, uh, what I say the third thing was, uh, they have resentment toward the son of God. So they don't fall to their knees and we have to be patient with them and maybe the Lord will bring them around in time. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All right. So next, um, so instead, the Pharisees sent what group of people to Jesus to discredit him? They struck out and they sent another group of people to Jesus to discredit him. Um, Bob, Barbara. He, he wrote this. He wrote this. That's close. Herodians. 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 Yeah, that means um, that means of Herod. So they were Herodians. Very good. Very good. Uh, and the next question, the Herodians um, were of Herod. That's A. B, tried to get on Jesus' better side with flattery. C, tried a political approach, or D, all of the above? Hmm. So the Herodians were of Herod, that's A, tried to get on Jesus' better side with flattery, C, tried a political approach, or D, all of the above. Y'all know what... When, when it's all above there, you know what the answer is. All of the above. <laughs> amen. Amen. It is all of the above. They were of Herod. Um, they tried to flatter Jesus. Uh, they tried a, a political approach on asking about taxes, which we'll talk about in a minute. So uh, the text said, I think it does, that the Herodians were disciples of the Pharisees. True or false? Yeah, true, B -B Barbara. True. All right, very good. It is true. They were disciples of the Pharisees. They were training them up. Uh, yeah. So I have four answers to the next one. Four statements, rather, and two I need you to pick the two that are correct. A, the Herodians respected Jesus. 
B, the Jews believe wealth was a blessing from God and they should have it. They should have, they, sh excuse me, let's start again. The Jews believe Excuse me. The Jews believe wealth was a blessing from God and they shouldn't have to give it to the Roman government. C. In the law, the Jews were to make no graven image of God, so they took issue with having to carry coins with the emperor on it. Uh, D. The Herodians wanted to find favor with Jesus. So which two are the correct statements? I need to read them again. Yes. All right. Herodians respected Jesus. The Jews believed that wealth was a blessing from God and they shouldn't have to give it to the Roman government. C, in the law, the Jews were to make no graven image of God, so they took issue with having to carry coins with the emperor on it. And D, the Herodians wanted to find favor with Jesus, which two are correct statements. B and B B B Barbara. <laughs> Go ahead, B says Bob. B you said B. B. Is that your final answer? Yes, sir. And then your final answer is correct. Yeah, the the uh, Herodians were not trying to respect Jesus, and the Herodians wanted to, uh, didn't want to find favor with Jesus. But the Jews believed that their wealth was a blessing from God and they sh shouldn't have to give it to the Roman government. And they took offense that they had to carry a coin in their pocket uh, with a graven image on it of the of the uh, emperor. So B and C is correct. All right. Need somebody to correct. No, complete this sentence. Uh, Jesus was asked if it's lawful. Somebody complete that sentence. Jesus was asked if it is lawful. Right there in verse 17. Bless it. Yeah, Trevor. All right. We have three people tonight, four people answering questions to five of us. Yeah, if I count correctly, to the answering questions. Uh, head and shoulders above the other one. Digging his Jones. Uh, I think it's say, what is it? They ask, is it lawful to give tribute trivia unto Caesar or mm -hmm. not? That's mm -hmm. what they ask. And yep. I think Jesus told them. No, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> uh, that, that's good right there. Um, so, uh, so yeah. So mm -hmm. they they were asking if it's if it's lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not. Mm -hmm. And you and you said it correctly. But thank you very much. Mm -hmm. All right. Next, who would have condemned Jesus if his answer was no? Do not pay taxes to Caesar. Who would have condemned him? Barbara Walker. The Pharisees. The, the Pharisees. Uh, yeah, and they, and but the Pharisees weren't there. Remember, they sent the Herodians, mm -hmm. oh, uh, yes. which were their disciples. Uh, uh -huh. So, what do you think would have taken place next? Herodians. Sis, Sis Joan. I think the answer is Herodians. Yeah, so the Herodians, since they were of Herod, chances mm -hmm. are they would have gone and told Herod, and then Herod would have condemned him. Oh. Herod would have condemned him. And remember, it was the Herod that condemned John the Baptist. Uh, so uh, that's what would have happened if he said, no, do not pay the taxes to Caesar. Because they were of, they they were in favor of the Roman government. Okay. So then, oh, people are answering the questions on, online. I'm just not seeing it. There's a 20 second delay. And so I can't tell which one's answered. 
Uh, <laughs> What's the question that had the two sentences? Two sentences. Uh, the one that the two, question that had the two, two answers being C. Yeah, pick the two correct statements. Yes. Uh, the Jews believe wealth was a blessing from God, and they shouldn't have to give it to the Roman government. And in the law, the Jews were to make no graven image of God, so they took issue with having to carry coins with the emperor on it. So they, yes, that was B and C. And and Dr. Jensen Shirley answered that correctly. They corrected themselves. <laughs> And and had came up with the correct answer. Very good, very good. Uh, uh, <laughs> and you're welcome. She says it's very educational and fun. Amen, amen. All right. Um, and and I'm a, I'm assuming that's a she. Is that correct, Sister Arlene? Doctor Shirley is a he. That's a he. I'm sorry. My apologies. My apologies. Okay. All right. Next. So, um, next question. Who would have been disappointed if Jesus said, we should wholeheartedly pay our taxes to Herod? Who can answer that question? Who would have been disappointed? We talked about it in Bible study. Dr. Cheryl is laughing. <laughs> okay, so let me help you out. Um, so the question was, who would have been disappointed if Jesus said, oh, we should pay, we should wholeheartedly pay our taxes to Herod. Uh, Jesus' Jewish followers would have been disappointed. Remember we just said, that they thought that uh, their wealth came from God and that they didn't, shouldn't have to give it to the Roman government and, and was offended because uh, they had to carry these coins around with the emperor's face on it. So if Jesus, if Jesus had to pay taxes, he would have offended his Jewish followers. Mm -hmm. So he was in a, he was in a no win situation. If he said, um, if he said, remember the Herodians, if he said to them, um uh no do not pay taxes he would have offended them they would have gone and told Herod if he said yeah we should we should wholeheartedly pay our taxes <laughs> excuse me <clears throat> he would have offended the Jewish people especially those that were following him because of their belief that wealth came from God and they should hold on to it um and plus they wanted him to uh the the uh, Romans were the oppressors their oppressors and he they wanted Jesus to organize them they had the wrong concept they wanted Jesus to to organize them to go and overthrow the Roman government so that they can be back in 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 the graces of God so uh next mm -hmm. um so what was Jesus's response when he saw the coin It's right there in the text. Van Hagen. Trustee Van Hagen, go ahead. Render and therefore to Caesar <clears throat> the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. Amen. Very good. Very good. Uh, very good. So he's give Caesar what the things that go, belong to Caesar and give God the things that are God. So, uh, did Jesus fall into the trap? Yes or no? Everybody can answer that. No. No. No, he didn't fall into the trap. And so then what belongs to Caesar? There might be one of several answers. What belongs to Caesar? Oh, let me, let me. Uh, tell me the one out of these four statements that does not belong to Caesar. Um, A, the coins. B, worship. C, stewardship over the government. D, an appointment by God. 
Which one does not belong to Caesar? You're right, Dr. Shirley. An appointment. An appointment. Look, God. Mm. Was it the an appointment? Uh, mm, no. No. <laughs> Worship. Yes. Worship. 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 Remember, we talked about it how uh, a lot of times the emperors demanded that the people worship them and treat them like they were gods. Mm -hmm. uh, so Jesus is 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 straighten, straightening out some some errors in their thinking. Uh, but the coins were his, uh, stewardship over the government and his appointment, his appointment over the government, I should have said it another way, his appointment over the government by, was by God also. So those three belong to Caesar. Worship does not. So then, this one should be easy. What belongs to God? Come on, everybody. We do. Everything. Everything. Uh, be more specific. Yeah. Well, I'll think of the last question. Before you answer, think of the last question. Salvation. <laughs> Worship. It doesn't belong to Caesar. It belongs to God. Uh, worship with our hearts. Worship with our minds. Worship with our soul. Worship with all our strength. Uh, to worship with our, our wealth. Um, the, the, the worshiping with our time, uh, our talents, as well as those treasures. So he, our worship belongs to God. Amen. 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 Mouse and worship no other God. <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, which takeaway do you like? It's four. You can you can choose the one that you like. All of these were given a few weeks ago. Uh, don't put Jesus to the test. Jesus will expose hypocrisy. Worship Jesus and give Caesar what is due Caesar. Speak out against an unjust government. Which one did you like? There's no wrong answer. Number four. Which one do you like? Which? Uh, who said number number four or D? Rem folks. Rem folks, you you it the takeaway you like is that we need to speak out against an unjust government. Right. All right. Don't put Jesus to the test. Jesus will expose hypocrisy. Worship Jesus and give Caesar what is due Caesar. Speak out against an unjust government. Don't put Jesus to the test. Amen. Amen. Anybody else have a have a takeaway that they like? Pastor Jensen put one out there. Uh, there it is. Don't put Jesus. Dr. Shirley said. Uh, don't put Jesus to the test. Amen. 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 Yeah, he, he told Satan that, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said, don't put him to the test. No, I ain't throwing myself down on no rocks so that he can send angels to my charge. Uh, no, that's not going to happen. Uh, so don't put Jesus to the test. It's, All right, we may not. We yeah. may not like his response. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes folks go and make major purchases. Um, 
they go make major purchases about praying over it first and seeking the Lord and getting direction from the Lord, put stuff all on the credit card and then say, Lord, help me out. Lord, help me, help me, help me, help me out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there's some people put Lord to the test in different ways. Okay. Uh, so all of those, none of those were false. All of those were takeaways from a few weeks ago. And mm -hmm. Not putting Jesus to the test uh, seemed to be the most popular tonight. So next question. Uh, we have about seven questions left. Uh, what group of people did not believe in the resurrection or an afterlife? Van Hagen. All right. Sadducees. Uh, yep. Sadducees. Sadducees. Mm -hmm. Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection or the afterlife. Um, the Sadducees, the next question, sad, very good. Sadducees believed in all of the Old Testament, true or false? Repeat that, please. Uh, read it again. Yes, please. All right. Uh, the Sadducees believed in all of the Old Testament, true or false? Who said that? Who said that? Don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> I heard somebody get an answer. I don't know who it was, but um, I'll I'll attempt to answer it. So <laughs> your question your question was: Did they believe in all of the Old Testament? Uh huh. Uh, no, I don't think it was all of it. Okay. Uh, uh, the first four uh, books? Is, is true. Like yeah, true or false? Because the next question is going to ask what they did believe in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the first question, the answer to the first question is false. Yeah, okay. Very good. <laughs> so the Sadducees believed in the law and the prophets. That's A. Uh, B, the poetic books. C, the first five books of the Bible. D, the New Testament. First five books of the Bible. First five. Dickens Jones? The first five books of the Bible. First five books of the Bible, which is also. Name, I can't remember, though. The five books. Pen, yes, Pentateuch. Yes. Pentateuch. <laughs> that's right that's right they believe in the first five the new testament wasn't even written then uh, and they didn't believe um uh, they didn't believe uh the law and the prophets in the poetic books and the, and the new testament wasn't there yet uh they believed in the law that was in the first five books of the of the bible uh, which is called the pentateuch all right now, I need a volunteer to describe the scenario painted by the Sadducees. I need a volunteer. Yeah. Who is that? Need a volunteer. Oh, okay. Uh, just so I noticed in the chat from, from Deacon Northcutt. Somebody remind me to tell you all later. Okay. So what was the scenario painted by the Sadducees? The woman's uh, uh, husband died, remember? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Cheryl said, "Doesn't have an idea." Remember, the woman's husband died, and what did the law say? What did they say? That the law said, "Who had to marry her?" The brothers. Brothers. The brothers. Mm -hmm. So, 
So the first one married her, and what happened to him? He died. Died. He died. And same thing happened to brother number two, three, four, five, and six. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, he killed right? them all off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 yeah. No comment. <laughs> no comment. Uh, so, uh, so the law of Moses said a man's brother uh, must marry. This is what they said: uh, must marry his wife and raise the offspring for his brother. And this happened seven times. And the Sadducees asked Jesus, "What did you? What would? It, what did they ask him?" Who's what? A real folk. Okay. Whose wife, whose wife would she be? In the Where? End? In the end. In the resurrection. In, 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 in the in the resurrection. In resurrection. Somebody in said, in, or in heaven. Right. In heaven. Amen. Amen. All right. Very good. Very good. All right. So, did the Sadducees know the scriptures? What did Jesus say? They did not. You know that they knew the Old Testament, the first four books. They knew that pretty good. Mm. But, but New Testament had not been written. Right, right. Yeah. But what did Jesus say about the, what they said they knew? Well, he what they thought they knew. What did he say? Con Lamb. He said, said there would be no, no marriages in heaven. Right. right. But right. what did he say? What did he say before that, though? That oh, you are mistaken he, and not knowing yeah, the scriptures. Yeah, they're mistaken. So they didn't, mm -hmm. they didn't know the scriptures. They, Nor the they, power of God. Mm -hmm. Right. They didn't, they, right. So you answered the next question. What else did they yeah. not know? <laughs> it was the power of God. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so here are folks. So here are folks that do not believe in the afterlife or the resurrection. Come and asking Jesus questions about the resurrection, and what they're thinking was is way off base. Mm -hmm. They're trying to trip Jesus up. Uh, they're trying to trip him up because they didn't believe in it, mm -hmm. uh, and they wanted them to wanted him to say, "Yeah, he's going to be number one, or number three, or number two, or something like that." Uh, when they didn't believe in it, uh, so. Uh, he's, they're trying to trip him up. They're, they're having their go at Jesus, trying to trip him up and discredit him in the eyes of the, of the public. Or mm -hmm. they may have wanted him, them to, if he, he, they wanted him to say, well, there's going to be no resurrection. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the Jewish people that have been following him, that, that was the common belief that there was going to be a resurrection. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to put him in a situation where he can't win either way he goes. Uh, but he tells them that they don't know the scriptures, that they're in error, and know that they know the power of God. Mm -hmm. And, and going, as you all said, there's going to be no marriages, um, uh, marriages, no weddings in heaven. Mm -hmm. And and mm -hmm. also, uh, to answer the next question too, so whose wife did Jesus say the widow would belong to? A, all of them, B, none of them, C, the first husband, D, the last husband. Which none one? Them. None of them. None of them. That would be B. Amen, amen. So uh, Jesus gave the following explanation. Um, and give, give me the correct answer. They neither marry nor are given in marriage. B, they are like angels in heaven. C is A and B, or D, none of the above. I know A. That's yeah. right, Dr. Sherilyn. You said none of the above. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> wait a minute now. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Jesus gave the following explanation. Listen to it carefully. They neither marry nor are given in marriage. Mm -hmm. That's A. B, they are like angels in heaven. Okay. Mm. A and B. C a is A and B. A Dr. Sherlock says yeah. A and B. Or D, none of the above. 
A and B. A and B. They're neither married nor given in marriage, and they're and, and, and we're going to be like angels in heaven. Amen. 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 Well, this is where we're going to end for tonight. Uh, we'll pick up with Jesus' explanation after this. And I appreciate your participation. Um, those that are on YouTube as well as on Zoom. Um, and we thank you, thank you, thank you. And we'll pick up right there. It's probably somewhere around verse 32 in chapter 22 of um, Matthew's gospel. And it may be a short class next week. Because we don't have but about 13, 14 verses to cover. We only have about 13, 14 verses to cover. Amen. 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 Uh, so with that said, um, with that said, let me thank you for your presence. Thank you for your participation as well as your prayers. And I will give a closing prayer. And we have a short period a very short period of fellowship on Zoom. Amen. Let us look to the Lord. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all of those who uh, thought it not robbery to come to Bible study tonight yeah. Yeah. to review the 22nd chapter of your gospel uh, written by Matthew. Mm -hmm. um, so, Lord, we, we thank you for all the, how you've refreshed our memory on this, and we mm -hmm. Pray, Lord, that you would uh, hide these words in our hearts so that we might not sin against you, uh, that you'll bring them to remembrance when we need them, mm -hmm. and that uh, we will um, uh, remember these takeaways mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and also these, these parables so that we can use them uh, to help, some, help bring somebody else closer to you. Amen. So, Lord... Uh, we, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your participation in our hearts and minds. And thank you for leading us uh, in our discussions. Um, we thank you also, Lord, for the forgiveness of our sins. And we pray, Lord, your word will continue to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So yes. keep, us, keep us, Lord, guide us and direct us according to your word, according to your word. And we'll be mindful, Lord, to, Oh, just like the scripture was read in prayer service that that uh, uh, Joshua uh, was spoken to by God and and, and to for him to uh, to stick to your word and that he mm -hmm. would prosper in everything that he does. So we thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Good night, everybody. On Good night. Thank you. Good night. Zoom. We're going to hang around a minute or two. Thank you. Anybody have anything?